Welcome one more day to space in Armonia. And as I said, I'm going to continue with the subject of love. This time, expressing how the nature of love adopts different forms of expression throughout different types of personality. And there are basic types or strategies that somehow are dominating in each person. We all have the nine energies, but some of them are more um, exaggerated than others because we tend to fall into the comfort zone. And a very interesting way of classifying all this, apart from the Sephirotic tree, is the famous symbol of the Enneagram brought to the West by Mr. Gurdjieff, an Armenian teacher, a master of dances, who expressed um, primordial teaching, making use of different allegories and symbols. And one of them was the Enneagram. And he also spoke about different types of personalities, different types of ruling loves that make us um, self-deluded, idiotic, as he would call it, but not in the sense of an insult, but in the sense of being caught up in our own self-deceptive recurrent behaviors. And there was even a Bolivian wise man known as Oscar Ichazo, who by the end of the 60s and in the beginning of the 70s, he classified nine types of personalities using the Enneagram. He opened a school in the desert of Arica. And here on the screen, you can see the types he described. Even though later on they were popularized with other names, especially after the diffusion of the teaching by one of his closest disciples, Claudio Naranjo, psychiatrist, psychologist, and there were other researchers, John Lilly in the US, one of the pioneers in the research of consciousness, also popularized the idea of the eneotypes, as well as Helen Palmer, one of the first in writing a book about the subject. And all this became popular. There are different schools speaking about it. And obviously, many of them have developed different views. It's clear that mm, the origin of the tradition goes back to the institute and schools initiated by Mr. Gurdjieff. I have been working with people involved in that work, so I'm familiar with the teaching. And there are many things which are usually not brought to light. Uh, most schools that speak about the Enneagram treat the issue very lightly. So I would like to address um, different interesting points. And I will start with the ruling love, which can be classified using the Enneagram. Starting with the nine personalities, there is nothing wrong in calling them different names as long as we realize that this tool is for self-knowledge and self-transcendence. So we are not just identifying ourselves with one personality. Many people like saying, oh, I am a one-type personality, a perfectionist. I am a romanticist. That's not the aim of the system, so to say. We have to integrate them all. We have to harmonize all energies within. So let's start with the first type of personality, usually known as the perfectionist, the reformer, because it's a type of person that likes to be the one, the first, very perfectionist, and therefore very demanding. And this can be one of the negative traits. A perfectionist sometimes is very narcissist. He likes to be followed, worship. He thinks he is perfect, when in reality he is not but he enjoys 
seeing others telling that he is the best. So that would be his ruling love. There is nothing wrong with being a perfectionist when you do it well in the proper context. And this type 1 personality is balanced with the seventh personality, the so-called planifier or hedonist, because he must enjoy life instead of being so perfectionist. The second type of personality is the helper, the giver. It's a person that enjoys giving, enjoys serving in a context, in a group, but very often seeking for love from others, recognition. Remember all I said about the number two, speaking about the energies. It's very parallel to this system, because it's basically the same. Now, the type two can also become very flattery. It enjoys the company of certain people, can become very emotionally dependent. So there must be a balance. All personalities must be balanced with some other personality. And this second type is balanced with the fourth, which is more individualistic, as we will see. Then we have the third type, usually known as the actor, achiever, performer, because he's a very goal-oriented personality, very successful when it's somehow pursuing certain objectives. However, it can be a bit full of vanity. Actors enjoy to be seen and they can be very successful accomplishing their goals because they pick up elements from others that are successful. And again, this is not wrong when it is done for getting out of your comfort zone of shyness, for instance. And this personality number three is usually balanced with traits from the number six personality, which is more familiar, is more compassionate and loyal, not so full of vanity. Then we have the personality number four, usually known as the artist, the melancholist, melancholic type of personality, the individualist, because it's someone that feels he or she is unique, that they deserve a great love from someone. So they very often dress in a different way. They feel they are strange. They are out of context everywhere. And they feel hard for being the different one. But they love to be in eccentric. They like to be different. And this is because they think others will love them more if they are that way. They don't realize the greatest love comes from the primordial source and is always pulsating within us. We have to love deeply with the big conscious love we have been given. Therefore, this type would only be balanced with the type one. If you become perfect, if you realize there is perfection in you, then you will have more qualities to be loved by others. Because you will not just be different or strange, you will be more authentic. Just as the tree, if the third type of personality gets authentic, then we are speaking about a different character, not just someone ruled by vanity. The four can also be affected by vanity, obviously, but the emotion that rules the four is melancholy. It's a sort of sadness, sort of sinking down because he or she doesn't feel fully loved. Now, then we have the fifth type, which is more intellectual. It's known as the observer or the investigator. It's a type of person that enjoys classifying everything with concepts, theories, labels, in order to be objectively separated from things around. Uh, it likes the impartial observation, so to say, even though it's not impartial at all. 
there is a lot of conditioning in that way of thinking and they can be very um, slippery people they are not talkative they are more reserved they can be very stingy we can find characters like those in society i would say mr gates is one of them and they can also get very pushy or cruel when they are not in tune so they must get balance with the personality number eight which is more challenging compassionate sometimes looking for justice now the character number six is known as the loyal i also call it loyal familiar because it looks for loyalty closeness in environments where one can feel in family especially for security this is a type of person which is very coward and fearful inside and enjoys being surrounded by people that supposedly are like family friends even though they can get very skeptic about some people if they sense someone can abandon them or be unfaithful they are very restrictive very skeptic this is why this type is also known as the skeptic and the balance would be the nine there must be an harmonia a mediating consciousness that finds the proper balance between all relations and even those who seem a threat wouldn't be that much of a problem when the person is in tune with their own inner safety then we have the personality number seven usually known as the planifier the hedonist because he's a person that is always making plans scheduling the future with the steps so that they can find situations of happiness pleasure they hate to suffer they get away from suffering at all costs so they are always looking for stimulations motivations and they always like to skip steps they want to arrive earlier they are very impatient and it's very difficult for them to focus unless they become more detached like the five for instance they tend to go to the one as a sort of negative trait perfectionists are also found in this type seven so we will see how um, different personalities are related this is very interesting and very scientific then we have the personality number eight usually known as the challenger the um, justice maker even in the Tao the path eight is justice and this is because the type eight is looking for imposing certain power um, doesn't like injustice or they have a very particular idea of justice but they can get a little bit dominating they pursue vengeance very easily if they feel threatened they will fight back they are not sheepy and they can be very controlling so they need to open their heart with the energy of the choose more cooperative compassionate calming down a little bit then we have the personality number nine which is usually known as the pacifier the mediator harmonizer and this is a personality in which i find myself secluded sometimes i tend to fall to this type we tend to be indolent we stay in the comfort zone even though we can have lots of things to share with others and very often we fall into what is called narcotization this is usually known as 
a narcotizing personality because the person tends to self-tranquilize or pacify himself, herself with food, with environments. We enjoy being in nature in peace. We don't like arguing with others. We are very passive. Instead of continuing an argument, maybe we leave. And we can lose many friendships and relations because of that. We don't engage in any type of conflict. So the only way of balancing all that is with the personality number three. We need to motivate ourselves to get out. And this is why I bring myself to these environments to speak in front of the camera. Sometimes I don't fancy at all, but I do it because I'm working on that nature, which is a bit lazy, indolent. And the type 9 personality also tends to the 6 personality because it makes the person feels familiar. Therefore, we need to work deeper, harmonize all the aspects in ourselves. Don't get accustomed to just one personality. Try to be whole, integral, from your point of view. Obviously, we all have traits that are positive, negative, but we need the whole tree of life within. This is why I am uniting the ideas from the Enneagram and the tree of life. And we will continue exploring this subject because it's very interesting and very illumining. Therefore, thank you very much for listening with attention and let's keep opening the mind and the heart, transcending our lower manifestations to express the infinite love and modified life, integral conscience and deep blissful serenity.